Hello everybody, it is Nicole from Yukiwi and welcome to another Mermaid Monday. Today we are going to be doing a draw this again challenge and I've done this before but today I wanted to do one from a video I did way back when I first started. If you guys have been subscribed to me for a while you'll probably recognize it but it is the Sunset Mermaid and I'll leave a link to that in the little eye in the corner. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. This mermaid I did on paper with some marker and I believe colored pencils as well. I was pretty limited with the color choices since I only had a certain number of markers and certain colors. So that's why the colors are what they are. And when I look back at this drawing that I did maybe three or four years ago, the main thing that I notice is that she has a ginormous forehead. So in order to redraw it, I'm just going to do it digitally just because all my Mermaid Mondays are digital so far and it just makes it easier for me to record them. Hopefully the colors aren't too off. I try to keep it as similar as possible and the color scheme as well just because I want to keep it as true to the original as possible. So to start off, the pose is pretty much the same. I try to keep it as similar as possible, although I did notice that when I was drawing this digitally, I had to include the other hand or else it would look kind of weird since I do tend to do it on a square format. And also the proportions and anatomy compared to back then are a little bit different in how I create my character. So that played a part in the developing of this character that I'm redrawing. So for the main idea and concept, I pretty much kept it the same. I try to keep all the scales in the same areas and the design for her top and her fins. The braids are pretty much in the same area except for her forehead. Because in the original drawing I had a bunch of braids on her forehead, in this one when I kept her forehead a reasonable size, it wouldn't fit, so I kept it to two braids instead. And it makes sense just because, like I said, the main thing I noticed with the old one was she has a ginormous forehead, which is also why she could hold like six braids at once. I also added the tail on the right side because it felt very empty not having the tail there, and I kept with the theme of her top and her top of her tail, just to make it fit as if she was a full mermaid, and she should be a full mermaid, but just to fit the entire theme and what her design looks like so it doesn't look out of the ordinary. There were some parts to the design that I changed a little bit, such as the part of her hair on the right side that kind of flies out. I thought that it made the drawing look a little bit unbalanced, so I took that out, and instead I started adding in those little strands of hair that I do now. I think having that strand of hair before kind of threw off the flow of the hair because for some reason that one piece of hair decided to fly off in another direction instead of following the flow and curve of the hair that's flowing naturally. And that kind of wraps up the whole concept part of it. You'll see me sketching it out really roughly and then I go over it again with the pencil setting and I do kind of like a cleaned up sketch version just so that it's easier for me to line it later and I do line some of it in video but it took so long that I didn't want to bore you guys and to speed it up too much because I know that if I speed up the video extremely fast just so that I could fit all the audio in and make sure it's not like a 25 minute video with five minutes of audio and I didn't want to blind you guys with the quick movements, I decided to cut out most of it because it's pretty repetitive. And if you see me line stuff in my other videos, you kind of see me do it a million times, so it's nothing new, it's just cleaning up the lines that I did before, and for this one I kind of cleaned it up already so you kind of know what the final lines will be. As for the flat color, I tried to keep it as close to the original as possible. Of course, that being said, I don't have marker swatches I can just swatch from to put onto my computer, plus 
it wouldn't be as accurate, so I tried to match it as closely as possible with the color wheel. I think if I wasn't doing a draw this again, I probably wouldn't have chosen these colors, but now that I'm looking at it right now as I'm doing the audio, at the final image, I really like it, and it's probably not something I would have chosen in the beginning, so kudos to my earlier self coming out with this random color scheme. And just like the line art, I kind of speed through the flat coloring as well, because it's repetitive and you guys see me do it plenty of times before. Now getting into the fun part of the drawing and the shading and coloring, most of the original drawing was done in gradation because in markers I like to blend stuff. And I remember that blending with markers, especially on Bristol board, was kind of difficult because you would have to keep the paper wet, but Bristol board likes to suck up all the moisture of markers and makes it hard to blend it together smoothly. So I remember going over it in many, many layers to make sure that it stayed wet and consistent and wasn't all blotchy and weird looking. But of course, in this version, the digital version, it is a lot easier for me to do gradations compared to back then with the marker. The only thing that I've noticed now that I'm looking at it again is that the orange, the orange pink color is not as vibrant as I thought it was. Since I draw on a Cintiq, it tends to be brighter on the Cintiq than it is on my actual monitor, so sometimes the colors vary depending on the computer screen. For some of the coloring, I did change it up a little bit, such as the braids. On the original drawing, she has these bright pink peachy colored braids in her like dark rose hair, and it felt very out of place, so I decided to make a small gradation between the two and make the roots of the braid go from that original hair color down to that peachy color, and then at the ends, I decided to add a kind of yellow-orange color to tie in the orange color of her tail. The rest of it is pretty much the same. For the scales on her, I decided to keep the pattern pretty similar. I use the same technique that I used on Toothless, if you guys watched that video, where I just make little irregular circles and fill in the gaps with tinier circles, and it tends to make pretty nice and natural looking scales in my opinion. And then for her arms, I kept it the same as well. Try to keep that gradation of purple on her and keep the placement in the same areas. Since she also had her other arm in there, I decided to add in more scales that were similar to the one on her right arm. And then she had scales on one side of her face, but I didn't know why I didn't put it on the other side. Maybe I decided not to for a reason. But in this drawing, the remake, I decided to put it on her on the other side just to add some symmetry to it. So overall, I really like how this one turned out. Like I said before, I probably wouldn't have chosen these colors had I not done it originally on paper. Since she has colored line art, which you guys have also seen me do a bunch of times before, I think the overall appearance is a lot softer instead of having those harsh black lines. My style has definitely changed from back then, like I said, maybe 3-4 years ago. I think the reason why it has changed is also because my influences have changed as well, and I've also learned a lot and went to art school in the time between this one and the previous one. Although I will say, in my previous one, I really like how I did her hand. It just looks really nice for some reason, in my opinion, and I like how that turned out. And I also like my creativity in the past, and the color scheme, and my diligence to keep working. <laughs> I can definitely say that I got faster in drawing, just overall in general, both traditional and digital over the past few years, and I'm glad that I can see an improvement between the two and see a different change and how my style has gone in a direction that I like. So that about wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Draw It Again video challenge. 
So with that, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Keep drawing, keep painting, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!